In today's video, we're going to talk about the various pros and cons of the various electronic bagpipes and electronic chanters that are on the market. Stay tuned. Well, hello everybody, I'm Matt Willis Bagpiper, and on this channel I make videos to make you a stronger and more confident piper. If you like this kind of content, please think about subscribing to the channel, liking the video, and commenting below with any thoughts you might have. I also teach Skype and online lessons if you want more personalized instruction, but more on that later. Electronic bagpipes. It's kind of a crazy thing to even think about. Not everyone knows they exist, but they do, and they can be really cool but they also can have some drawbacks. And today we're gonna to talk about both the pros and cons of these lovely but kind of crazy instruments. Now there are many of these on the market right now, actually a surprising amount of these on the market right now. In my hands right here is a Red Pipes Classic. This is one of two digital bagpipes I play on stage with my rock band, Rathmore. And for our live stage shows, I actually no longer use an acoustic bagpipe. That's right, the pros of these particular instruments for a on stage setting for me have actually outweighed any cons they might have. But there are many other brands. One of the most popular right now is the Blair Electronic Bagpipe and there is an unboxing of that in a card up here. It's a fantastic instrument, probably has the most features of any of them. There's also the Red Pipes Caledonia, which again, I play on stage with Rathmore. That has the whole bit of business. It's built around a McCallum set of poly pipes. It looks like a real set of pipes, but it's fully digital. And the red pipes here come in several varieties. This happens to be the classic, which has a bag that you squeeze to provide its pressure. But there's also a mouth blown version of this one where you actually have to inflate a bag. So that would, you know, help a little bit with your mouth. There's also the Deeger pipes, which has a control panel on it, making it easy to access everything. There's the Fagerstrom Techno pipes and Techno Channer. The Fagerstrom Techno pipes has more options, more sound fonts and such. The Techno Chanter is just an electronic practice chanter. And the Glencoe Pipes, which again, I've unboxed and reviewed up here, is just an electronic practice chanter. It doesn't have a lot of bells and whistles, but can help you out in that regard. So let's not waste any more time, get right into the pros of the various electronic bagpipes and chanters that are on the market. Number one, it allows you to practice at times and places that you otherwise wouldn't. With all of these electronic bagpipes, they have an eighth inch standard headphone jack. So you can go ahead, put in headphone, and you're not gonna bother anybody while practicing your various tunes and finger work, whether it's during a commercial break on TV or waiting for the bus or what have you. If you have, say, the Deeger or a Fagerstrom or even the Blair, you could practice that at a bus station or on the bus or waiting for a plane or during a commercial break on TV. There's so many places you could break out your pipes and get a few extra minutes of time. And believe me, those add up. That extra time, that extra work on your fingering can go a long way to helping you memorize tunes, clean up your technique and fingering. So lots of good things to be said. If you have one of these variety, kind of the something built around a bag, well, these are a little bit more awkward. I probably wouldn't break this out uh, again, uh, waiting for an airplane or anything like that but they have their other pros that we'll get to shortly. Pro number two, the nonstop nature of the sound that comes out of an electronic instrument. If the only instrument you've had while learning the pipes is a practice channer, that is not entirely similar to playing the pipes because you can stop the sound at any point you want by taking a breath or just stopping the airflow while thinking about what you need to do or what have you. But on a set of pipes, that air is constantly going through the reed. And yes, while you can stop the sound, it's not the same thing as stopping your breath. It takes more energy, more effort. It's not nearly as natural. And so with that continuous sound, it forces your brain to focus on the music in the way it's going to have to on the pipes themselves. The sound continues, so you have to be laser focused on what you're doing so that you can stay in the moment, on your tune, on your exercise, whatever you're doing. And I think that can go a long way to training your brain to think in the manner you're gonna to need to be thinking when you're on the actual Highland pipes. Pro number three, any of these electronic bagpipes are relentless at finding crossing noises. The tiniest crossing noise that you might not be able to pick up on an acoustic bagpipe, a reeded bagpipe, are gonna show up like nobody's business on a set of electronic pipes. Again, any of the brands, I'm talking for all of them, they all do the same thing because of how well they work. And why is that? Well, it's the nature of the instrument. When you're going from say D to E, if there's even the tiniest moment, the tiniest split second where the two fingers are overlapping, you're gonna hear a big 
full, either low A or low G, depending on what your bottom hand is doing. Whereas on a reeded acoustic instrument, it's likely that that finger's already on its way off and that even if there is a noise, it's gonna be a slight kind of whack noise rather than a bong, big loud noise. So that can be great if you have issues with crossing noises, you can really start solving those because they're not gonna hide themselves and you're gonna be forced to start making sure that you're lifting before you lower with all of your finger motions to avoid those crosses. Pro number four, it requires you with your grace notes to actually lift your fingers off the chanter. Now don't get me wrong, I don't like big, huge grace notes. I've talked a lot in many of my videos about keeping your grace notes small and percussive. That being said, they still need to actually lift off of the chanter. And on a practice chanter or on a real set of pipes, you can kind of get away with just a little bit of venting, if you will, where the finger doesn't fully lift off the hole, but enough of the fleshy bit gets off of the hole that it gives you the illusion of a grace note, though it's not going to be as clear or crisp as a grace note that the finger actually removes itself from the chanter. With these electronic bagpipes, be it one with the electronic sensors like this or one with an optical sensor inside and open holes, it doesn't matter on either of those. If you don't actually lift the finger off the chanter the way you should anyways, the grace note won't sound. So I know many of my students have had very good sounding Tara Lewis say on their practice chanter, but they get over to an electronic set like this and all of a sudden they only have one low G because ah, that D grace note might've been a little wimpy. It was a little small, not actually separating. And that can be kind of a, a curative thing to make sure that your grace notes are sounding the way they need to. Pro number five for many of these sets is that you can export MIDI data directly. Now on the red pipes here on the panel, you can see it actually has a MIDI cable out right here. So if you have a MIDI cable to USB or some sort of USB to MIDI interface for your computer, you can go ahead, plug the straight in to your computer via MIDI cable. On the Blair electronic channel, you can just go straight with the USB cable straight out of the Blair into your computer and the MIDI processing is done in the Blair itself. The Deager pipes come with a cable that allows you to export the MIDI data out from your playing to your computer. And I believe the Fagerstrom Techno Pipes also has a cable that allows you to export MIDI data. So why might you want to mess around with MIDI data? Well, if you're an old school traditionalist piper, you're probably not interested in an electronic bagpipe anyways. But if you want to start incorporating bagpipes into say more modern music, but maybe you just want a visual representation of your playing, uh, programs like GarageBand, I assume Audacity for the PC will put up what's called the piano roll, and you'll be seeing this right now, where you can actually see the information of your playing on screen and measure the length of your grace notes, have a visual guide to how you're actually playing, how you're aligning with the beat and everything else. There's so much you can do with MIDI. I actually have a digital breakdown of Scotland the Brave where I use this captured MIDI data using a cable and compare it to a pre-programmed Scotland the Brave. So if you're interested in learning a little bit more about these MIDI bagpipes, check that video out. Now, if you have a Fagerstrom Techno Chanter, one of the old Ross style electronic chanters with the box and a speaker or a Glencoe, none of these have MIDI out. They are just what they are. You can still output via the eighth inch cable into some sort of audio processing program, but it won't be digital MIDI data. Just keep that in mind. If you're wanting to capture MIDI, make sure before you purchase your electronic bagpipe that it's capable of doing that. Number six, they're always in tune. And on many of these sets, you can actually get them in equal temperament tuning, which is a slightly different scale than this standard bagpipe scale. Equal temperament is this type of tuning that is used on concert pitched instruments. We use a form of just temperament for the pipes that allows each note to be in tune with the drones. But when you're playing with other people, to be honest, you're not going to use your drones much of the time. The music that you're going to make with other musicians, guitars, and what have you, they're going to be playing chords. And most of the time, they're not going to want a droning A underneath at all times. So you're going to find yourself, if playing with other instruments, likely playing just the chanter much of the time. And if you're playing just the chanter, you might as well have it in equal temperament, which is a setting you can set up on many of these types of electronic bagpipes so that each note is actually in tune with your fellow musicians. I can't tell you how exciting it was to perform with a Red Pipes set like this on stage the first time. And as the weather shifted, I didn't have to start panicking about falling out of tune. I knew I was going to stay in tune. And that alone, that weight being lifted was huge and allowed me to really focus on the performance rather than just simply having to worry about my tuning as I had had to do for years and years and years and years and years before that. 
And pro number seven, kind of an offshoot of number six, you can change many of these sets to play in different keys. In fact, on this red pipe set right here, it has a preset dial where I can have 10 separate tunings or settings set up and I can easily and readily just turn this dial and bring in whatever key I want. At the moment, setting zero is set up for concert A with no accidentals. So I don't have to worry about accidentally getting an F natural or a C natural coming out. And it's an equal temperament. Setting number one is A with accidentals. I even have this set up so that the tonic note, when I go to an A, a D comes out in one of them. On another one, an E comes out. So it gives you a lot of variety if you're playing with other people about what keys you're gonna play in. The only way you're gonna be able to have multiple keys on a regular set of pipes is to have either a couple of channers, and even that's limited. You can go from B flat to A, or have a completely different instrument ready to play, like a set of small pipes in D if you wanted to be in D, or maybe a set of illin pipes in D if you wanted to be in D. With this right here, I can just dial it in, boom, have it ready and go to program, in this case, number four, and be in the key of D and ready to play a completely different range of notes uh, and not waste any time on stage doing so. Number eight, again, for onstage use, if you're in a particularly small venue, an electronic set can let you actually play without deafening the audience. Now, sure, you could bring in a set of small pipes and try to mic those up, and that works fine too, but if you wanted the sound of a Highland bagpipe, or at least something close to it, you could play a smaller venue, have the sound of the pipes, but because the volume is being controlled by either the sound guy or through your amp and you, you can have the appropriate volume for the venue and not deafen the people in the front row if you're playing at a small pub or similar. And then finally, especially if you have, again, this Red Pipes Classic here that's pre-filled or the Blair Bad, which I have not tried, but I would have to believe functions very similar to this. Either of these that have a pre-filled bag, it forces you to squeeze the entire time you're playing. And what I learned the first time I actually started playing this Red Pipes Classic was I didn't keep my arm nearly as engaged as I thought. Playing this Red Pipes Classic actually helped me engage my arm more fully more of the time. Because again, it's not sounding if you're not squeezing. And that's way more similar to how you should be playing your pipes. You shouldn't be squeezing a ton and then when you go to blow in, letting your arm off a lot. You should have pressure being delivered through your arm into the bag at all times, you're going to vary that pressure depending on your breath, but you're never gonna actually be lifting your arm if you want really steady tone. So an instrument like, again, the Blair with its bag or the Red Pipes here, that's pre-filled with some foam requiring you to squeeze. I've seen this actually help train many pipers to have a more constant squeeze on the bag and therefore a steadier tone when they actually move over to their Highland Pipes. Before we get to the cons, let's pause for a bit of whiskey. Today we're trying the Laphroaig Select right here. Now this is a newer Laphroaig. Now one of the things about this is it's been aged in new American oak casks, rarely used for Scotch whiskey maturation. Nice, fairly light color, though maybe a touch darker than normal Laphroaig, but I actually don't have regular Laphroaig to compare it to, but I've had more than a few bottles of that over the years. It's less medicinal on the nose. It's still got a lot of peat on the nose, but I would say it's tempered compared to a standard Laphroaig tenure. And the wood comes through a lot, along with some, I would say some apple, but it's way less, I don't really smell the iodine, the kind of the, the medicinal kind of uh, scents you got out of a normal Laphroaig. I'm not really getting on this, but let's give it a taste. So again, you can't mistake that this is still a peaty, peaty whiskey, but it's not nearly the peat level of, say, a standard Laphroaig 10. It's certainly not like one of their quarter casks. But that New American Oak really comes through very strongly. There's um, some bourbon-like notes, I would say, coming through this. And let's see if just a, a little bit of water might just help open this up. I don't really... I don't notice anything really different on the nose, but I would say with the addition of water, it actually tempers some of that woodiness, some of that oakiness a little bit. Let's the smoke, that peat kind of come through a little bit more, but I am missing a bit of that iodine note. The normal Laphroaig 10 is actually a fairly light whiskey if you take that smoke away. This is a little bit more full bodied. So if you enjoy bourbon and you enjoy scotch and you haven't been quite sure if you like peat or not, maybe the Laphroaig Select is one you might want to try. I'm definitely enjoying this. It's a different dram than I expected, but in no way unpleasant. So we've talked about all the benefits, the pros of an electronic set. What might some of the cons be? 
Number one by a long shot would be so many people when they get an electronic set start practicing on their actual pipes or their practice channel or whatever your other real readed instrument is less, maybe even far less, or maybe even replacing it all together for a while. And while there are pros, there are other cons we'll get into as well. But one of the biggest is you're going to start losing your face muscles. You're going to start losing your lung capacity. If you're not playing some sort of squeezy set like this one right here, you're possibly even going to lose some of your muscular, you know, you know, coordination that you've built up for squeezing the bag and everything. An electronic set is best used, in my opinion, as something to complement, to supplement, to do something amend to your playing. You still need to be picking up your practice channer or your pipes, or you still need to be picking up your pipes or your practice channer or both. You need to be blowing through an instrument to maintain, well, your face, the, the sound of the reed, everything else. So these are wonderful tools for all sorts of reasons, but they don't actually replace the Highland bagpipes or your practice channer, so don't let them. Con number two. So as effective as these electronic sets are at finding crossing noises and helping you fix them, it can lead to its own problem, and that is the lazy passive hand. And what I mean is if you're on, say, a D and wanting to go to an E, and you're finding you have a cross, clip, clip, every time you're doing that on an electronic set, what you might find yourself doing is lifting and more slowly lowering these fingers than you would on an acoustic set. Now, some of these various bagpipes make a different sound if this hand's up or down. Some do not. But in any case, it feels different and you are not quote unquote penalized to the same degree if you're a little lazy in bringing this down. But on a set of Highland pipes, if you're playing an E and you haven't brought your bottom hand down almost immediately, you know, you don't want the cross, but you don't have a lot of time. If you don't have that hand down, that E is gonna be out of tune and it's gonna be noticeable to not just you, but your audience. So be mindful if you're using a set like this to practice that you want to avoid their crossing noises, but you don't want your passive fingers, which are the fingers that aren't actively sounding to make the note, you don't want them to get lazy in the process to avoid those crossing noises. So just something to keep in mind. Con number three, on most sets, there's no sort of speaker. Now, yes, there are now red pipes that have a built-in speaker, or you can attach some sort of smaller speaker to all sorts of different ones, but let's not get ourselves, it's not the same as the sound, the volume, the projection, the timbre, the just resonance of an actual bagpipe. And if being used on stage, even if you have that set of Red Pipes Caledonia, which again, I play on stage all the time, the illusion is readily shattered. If I were to walk in the audience and there's no sound blasting out of my channel, nothing coming out of the drones, and yet they're hearing all that through the PA, well, they're at least going to know you're playing an electronic set. So just something to keep in mind. And many people have written me when they've gotten their various electronic sets that don't have a built-in speaker. They try to get them to work and they're like, I can't hear them. Not being aware that they have to put in either a set of headphones or wire it up to another powered speaker system to be heard. So unless it's advertised as having some sort of built-in speaker, like either the some of the red pipes that have a built-in speaker or the older Ross sets, and I'm sure there's a couple others out there, if it doesn't look like it has a speaker, you're going to have to put in headphones or wire it up to some sort of powered speaker. Con number four, there's no really building steady blowing and squeezing technique. On many of these electronic sets, they're not attached to a bag at all. They're just being powered by their battery and you don't have to worry about blowing, squeezing, everything's in tune, everything's level, that's great, but it doesn't help you build your blowing and squeezing technique. And even when I talked about sets with a bag like this, like either the red pipes or the blare with the bag, while it's gonna help build the muscle and engagement, it's still not the same as actually that kind of clutching motion you have to develop between your blowing and squeezing and making sure everything maintains steady, even tone and airflow going through everything. Even sets that require air, it's just a different feel. It's not directly transferable. So you can use them. You can use those sets that you have to blow into, like a Red Pipes Classic that has a fillable bag, and that'll help keep your mouth strong, but the nature of how you're cycling the air is simply different and not directly transferable back to the pipes. If you want to develop good, strong, confident sound on your bagpipes, good, steady blowing and tone, you're going to have to put in time on an actual bagpipe. Con number five, because they're always in tune, which was one of the pros, it also means that you're not developing any of the skills you need to tune the instrument, be that reed placement, taping, drone tuning. So since none of that is required, you're also not building any of those skills that could be so critical to making your bagpipe sound as good as you want it to be. Con number six, kind of an outshoot of con number five, 
not only do you not have to tune it, because there's no reads in any electronic set, you don't have to tweak any reads. Well, that's both a pro, I guess, but it's a con in that you're making beautiful, perfectly tuned sound without having to learn any of the technique needed to get your reads under control, playing at a strength you need, the kind of skills you need to be a piper. That is if your goal is to play a set of physical pipes. If your goal is just to play an electronic set of pipes, well then these cons don't matter. Con number seven. If you have a set with these electronic sensors like this red pipe has and many of the others do, if you're anything like me, you're gonna have to put hand lotion on quite often. I guess I have relatively dry hands, but when I'm playing a set of these on stage, I actually put a little bit of lotion on between just about every tune to make sure I don't lose contact. If you lose contact with one of these sensors, you know, even if your finger's on it, but it's too dry, it, got, it makes a terrible electronic sound. And again, you aren't going to fool anybody about it being a real instrument when it's making that sound. And if you have the Blair or one of the red pipes with the optical sensors or any of the other ones that may at this point be incorporating the optical sensors. Those are a little bit more forgiving when it comes to moisture, but you have to make sure that the sensor settings are appropriate for the environment you're in. They use a light from inside and that's the optical sensor it's seeing. So if the light outside is too bright, it can conflict with the light inside. So you have to make sure the sensors are dialed in to your environment so that you're not missing grace notes that you might otherwise be playing. Again, with a reeded bagpipe, you don't have to worry about any of that stuff. You got a lot of other things to worry about, but you don't have to worry about um, keeping your hands necessarily overly moisturized or tweaking sensor settings. And con number eight, this is specifically for the little stick variety. The Glencoe and Fagerstrom models come to mind. There might be some others on the market. Without a mouthpiece or sole or anything else, I find these can be actually slightly awkward to hold. They're not really able to be held readily. You can kind of rest it against your leg perhaps, but I owned a Fagerstrom Techno Chanter for several years and I played the heck out of it. It helped me get tons extra practice in and help me memorize, give me the time to memorize my band repertoire at the time. But I do remember it took quite a long time to find a good balance point. It was a little awkward in my hands without having a mouthpiece or something to rest it in your mouth. So be aware if you get one of just the simple stick model ones, they're very convenient, but they're a little hard to hold. They're also somewhat easy to lose. When I was coming back from Scotland in 2001, when my band Silver Thistle had a chance to play in grade four B at the world championships, flying back, um, I left my Fagerstrom electronic chanter in the back of the airplane pocket, and that was the last time I had that guy. So they're relatively easy to lose too with their small size, just something to keep in mind. Well, there you go, everybody. Some pros and cons about electronic bagpipes. I've been playing on stage with electronic bagpipes now for about a decade, so I have quite a bit of experience with these. I've also been making music regularly on my acoustic bagpipes for, well, 25 years now. So. Um, I've really kind of put in the time in both camps, and these are the things that have come to my mind about the pros and cons of an instrument such as this one here, or the Blair, or any number of those. But if you have different pros or cons, please, I'd love to hear your opinions about any of these, or the new ones you have in the comments below. Well, thank you so much for watching, everybody. If you got something out of this video, please think about giving it a like, subscribing to the channel, and hitting that bell icon to be notified of when I post new videos. I also have a Patreon where as little as a dollar a month goes a really long way to helping support the channel. You'll see names now of folks scrolling up, including Miss Carrie Tresek, my number one supporter. These are people that support the channel monthly. As little as a dollar a month goes a really long way. You often get early access to videos and other perks, so go over and check out my Patreon. I also give Skype and online lessons. Go ahead and head over to www.commandyourbagpipe.com or email me at the address you see down here. And we'll get you going. I'm working with folks from all over the planet, and I hope to work with you soon. I also have a line of Command Your Bagpipe merchandise, like this fine shirt I'm wearing right here. But there's also hats and mugs and hoodies and other things, so go head over to the merch store and let the world know that you command your bagpipe. Again, thank you so much for watching, everybody. I'm Matt Willis, Bagpiper, and until next time, cheers. <laughs>